Okay, so uh, I'm here with um, Patrick Galbraith in uh, Akiba, the heart of otaku culture in Japan. And um, Patrick has just released this new book, the Encyclopedia. The, sorry, the Otaku Encyclopedia. So, um, Patrick, yes, what's it all about? Well, it's about otaku. It's about Akihabara. It's about uh, the wild and wacky times that you have down here in the underbelly of subculture, pop culture in you know, Japan. And uh, what was it that uh, that got you started down the otaku path? Seriously, uh, I was about maybe six or so when I saw Nashka, The Valley of the Wind, untranslated, and um, I had no idea what it was. So I was like, this weird language, like, what I had no idea. And I see this face, and I'm like, she's really moe, she's cute. And I had this attraction, and I had no idea what to do with it. So I started like studying Japanese with my brothers. I started like looking around, trying to get more information. We went to Alaska Airport, Anchorage Airport getting like imports and stuff, whatever we could find. And we kind of like tried to piece together this um, idea of Japan. And uh, so in my mind, there was this big mythic thing called, you know, Japan. And what I found out in the end is what it was, it was otaku. There was nothing <laughs> Japanese about it. There was this, this world of weird robots and, you know, tentacles or what have you that I was exposed to when I was very young. And then I came to Japan and I found out that it wasn't here. Or it wasn't here that I could see, a place where I could see anyway. So I came to Akihabara looking around and like, maybe it's here. And that was about 2004. And so around that time, Akihabara was just starting to change and it became really interesting because the words started to become rapidly increasing words, rapidly increasing um, like cultural tendencies. Uh, more people were becoming otaku on TV and so on. So um, I really was here right at the crest or, or the beginning of that boom. So I wanted to kind of like, um, reconcile what I thought I knew with what I found out wasn't there or like what I found out the differences and then also um, kind of chart the changes that I saw going on so really it was a very in the beginning um, only for my own purposes and it became so long it was like um, I think before I went to Kodanche it was maybe five or six hundred pages long it was a freaking wow. huge tome and then after that, um, of course, they said you can't sell that and they started cutting it down and they started trying to talk about um, what was it, um, interplay between entries. So like if somebody mentions White Day in an interview, you have to have an entry on White Day. Even though it's not necessarily otaku, it has to all be enclosed in the, the book itself. So some things that should have gone in or I felt should have gone in, didn't while other things went in. But at the same time, I think as a starting point, like the way I was in the beginning with well, any orientation, I think for someone like that, it's an ideal way to kind of get a glimpse of um, things and kind of get some concrete facts that will help you on your own exploration, on your own journey. So right. That's what it is. It's like opening the pages of Otaku Culture. I see, yeah. I mean, it does look pretty comprehensive, but also really entertaining. It's a really I inviting so. book. So. Basically, you've got, uh, you go through the alphabet, um, just like in a, in a standard um, encyclopedia, but you've got these fantastic illustrations spicing up some really good, short, concise, but really uh, interesting entries. So out of this um, encyclopedia, are there, what are the three entries that kind of are, um, uh, you're proudest of or, or the three entries that were the most interesting for you to research? Well first I would have to say Akihabara because I, this, this was the first place I came. So for me Akihabara has a really special meaning. Uh, along with that I would also say maids. So I, I really liked maid cafes, I really liked Akihabara, so I, I kind of for my own um, otaku history that was a big thing. Before that it was just animation, like me in my room watching animation, kind of trying to figure it out by myself. When I came here in Akihabara I found like a community of otaku doing their stuff on the streets or what have you. So for me Akihabara is a really important one. Um, maids, moe, so can I choose four? Oh, Aki cool Akihabara, one, maids, moe, and otaku. Okay, four are my right. Favorite. And there's plenty of maids here tonight at the book launch. There is, there, there is, yeah. They're very cute. Can you explain a little bit more about Moye for those uh, listeners who don't know what Moye is? Sure. Um, one of my favorite um, theorists, Honda Toto, describes it as imaginary love. So it's something, you look at something and you say, well, I feel an attraction, but it's not quite physical. I'm not sure what it is. Like if you look at a maid, because she's wearing a maid costume, she's like partially in the fantasy world. So you say, well, you know, it's not love, it's not lust, it's boring. So it's kind of like in-between emotion. It's a very flexible, ambiguous, kind of euphoric feeling. And I think um, 
Well, for some otaku anyway, not all, but for some otaku, this euphoric feeling, this affect is extremely important. So um, I hope to chart the new patterns of Moe in the future. Right. So you mentioned earlier that there were some things which you thought should have been in this encyclopedia which didn't make it. Could you, could you tell me what one of those things was that didn't make the final cut which you wish could have done? Dolphin. Sorry? The, the dolphin's the, not in the, the dolphin? dolphin? Yeah, the dolphin. No, no, that's no, no, it's not, no, not the dolphin, no. That's, Danny tells me the dolphin should have been there. No, okay, no, that's not it, no. Um, it's definitely not the dolphin. There, there, there's, there's, not a dolphin. there's lots of little things that I think should have been in there. Like, for example, um, instead of talking about street idols or something like that, there should have been a discussion of um, Chica Doll, underground idols. That would have got the nuance of um, street idols with a much broader discussion. Uh, there's also an overemphasis on, as I, as I said, because I came in 2004, there's an overemphasis on the newer stuff, what would be called like a moe otaku, or the, the new otaku, this, um, this new generation. And I think uh, a lot of the collectors, like people from the 60s or 70s, um, tokusatsu for sure, is not quite um, as, it's not quite as, it's not given as much attention as moe whether that's good or bad. I think the people who are becoming otaku now probably are less interested in tokusatsu, more interested in moe, or are tokusatsu becoming more moe, like Kamen Rider, Kiba, or something like that. But at the same time, I think you have to know your history really well in order to understand the trends going on right now. So I would hope to, in expanded edition, really deal with some of those early forms of otaku behavior, some of those really early things going on there. We have Chogokin in here, but like more more, more kinds of toys, more kinds of collection, more kinds of fans, before there were idols, before there was more, before there was so much anime culture. Okay, so my final question then, maybe it's an impossible question. I'm coming to Japan, I'm going to be in Tokyo for two days, and on one of those days I want to experience otaku culture. What do I do? There's some people that will tell you you shouldn't come to Akihabara. There's some people who will say that because Akihabara is changing or what have you. But the alternatives are to go to Ikebukuro, where the female fans hang out, or to go to Nakado. And Nakado is a place where, unless you know what you're doing, you're going to get lost in this old, kind of old school type of culture. So still, even though people will probably disagree, I say you should come to Akihabara. You should spend maybe half the day here, check it out, maybe go have lunch in a day cafe, and if you don't like it, then go to another place and kind of check out the other kinds of otaku culture. And you should probably, in my opinion, you should probably actually ask someone who lives here or comes here regularly. If you just come to a place like Nakano or Ikebukuro or uh, even you know, Shinjuku looking for otaku culture there, it's really easy to get in over your head to get lost or you get a mistaken conception or whatever. So I also do a tour in Akihabara and I hope to kind of give people that kind of orientation. The book has a similar kind of goal. So I would say, um, come down, enjoy half a day, guided kind of thing in Akihabara, and once you get an idea for what's happening here in this biggest well of otaku culture, then go other places and check it out. It's, it's, of course, it's just a personal opinion, but start here.